Now, in the specific case of an ischemic cardiomyopathy, there are several reasons why the right ventricle can be involved. First of all, if there's an infarct of the septum, remember the septum also supplies parts of the right ventricle. So if you have an infarct there, it will also affect right ventricle function. But it could also be that the patients have very poor left ventricle function and that basically the right ventricle has a reduction in preload. Preload, again, is very important for function, both for the left and for the right ventricle, and therefore this might also affect the function of the right heart. But the most common reason why the right ventricle is actually involved is because patients can develop post-capillary pulmonary hypertension, and therefore, again, we have pressure overload of the right ventricle, which eventually will lead to deterioration of right ventricle function. So, Many different mechanisms can lead to involvement of the right ventricle. And if you look at cardiomyopathies in general, it's important to understand that the right ventricle function is a very important prognostic factor. Here, in this example, you have two patients. Both have very poor left ventricle function, but this is the patient who has the poor prognosis because his right ventricle function is reduced opposed to this patient where right ventricle function is still okay. Right ventricle dysfunction is quite frequently in cardiomyopathies. It's estimated to be between 34 and 65 percent. And again, the reason why you develop poor right ventricle function in cardiomyopathies is manifold. The first cause is that the patient might have myocarditis in the first place that also involved the right ventricle. But it could be that these patients develop right ventricle dysfunction later on in the development of cardiomyopathy because they have high pressure in the left atrium that translates to pulmonary circulation. In other words, we have post-capillary pulmonary hypertension, which is a burden to the right ventricle, pressure overload, and leads to deterioration of right ventricle function over time. And then the third option is that these patients have a dilated right ventricle, which causes tricuspid regurgitation, which then is volume overload, which eventually leads to a poor right ventricle function. So all of these can come into play, and sometimes they're even combined. What are some of the facts about right ventricle dysfunction in cardiomyopathy? First of all, as already mentioned, RV dysfunction in dilated cardiomyopathy is frequent. It predicts outcome, but one other very important finding in this study here was that it actually precedes the improvement, if you initiate therapy, to the improvement in left ventricle function. So observe the right ventricle also very closely in the follow-up of these patients. Right ventricle function is an independent predictor of survival in heart failure, and if you have an ejection fraction, a right ventricle ejection fraction, below 35 percent, it's actually a stronger predictor than the ejection fraction of the left ventricle and even better than the VO2 absolute or of the predicted VO2. So the right ventricle should definitely be looked at. And here is a beautiful example of a patient who has biventricular heart failure, very poor left ventricle function, but also very poor right ventricle function, as you can see here.